Hi everyone, I'm here today to do the anti-TBR tag. I was tagged by Jill over at the Book Bully, you should definitely check out her channel, and I am so grateful that she tagged me because it gave me an excuse to do this tag. I was gonna do it anyway, but it's always nice to have that motivation. So the concept of this tag is to talk about books that you have no interest in reading, therefore they're not on your TBR, anti-TBR. I don't feel like I need to preface this with any kind of pre-apology or like cushioning of your feelings. I feel like we're all adults here. My not liking a book or not having an interest in a book is not an indictment of you as a person or your character. Uh, it's just an opinion. So let's talk about things that I have zero interest in. Hopefully this will be fun. The first question is a popular book everyone loves that you have no interest in reading. I have actually tried to read this book before and it is my go-to answer for things like this because, I don't know, back in like 2013 I think I tried to read The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern and since then have never understood the appeal. I was unable to finish it back then, I've never wanted to go back to it and I do not get why people love it so much. You cannot have a book that is just descriptions of a circus, that's not a plot, that, that's not that's not anything. It's just a list of adjectives and descriptors. Like, like we get it, you're trying to reach your NaNoWriMo word count, but when it comes to editing that can all be cut out in post. There's a way to do atmosphere that also has substance, but The Night Circus has no substance. Like it has that bare bones plot about two rival magicians that have been raised to duel each other eventually and they fall in love or something. But that is so like on the back burner compared to just like everything that's going on with the circus and just describing all of the different booths, the the endless booths, it just, that's not a plot. It's just not a plot. I, I will never understand why people like it, but I'm glad you do. Question number two is a classic book or author that you have no interest in. And again, I have tried this before, this person, but I have no interest in ever going back. And that is Charles Dickens. I read Hard Times in high school. I read our mutual friend in college. I hated every minute of both of those reading experiences. I don't like Charles Dickens. I think that he tries really hard to be clever and funny, but I can just, it feels so painstaking and, and overworked to me, overwrought. I also don't particularly like serialized novels. I get that that's like how it was written, but for me as a modern reader it's not very fun to read books where like it was very obvious he didn't know where he was going. Um, so characters disappear and then come back and and I feel like sometimes their personalities change to suit the narrative and I just don't think it's well structured. I, I don't think it's well plotted or paced. They're way too long and I have no fun with them. But like I don't like things that are trying really hard to be funny. I have a particular brand of humor. Obviously I like things that I find funny, but things that are, are I think trying to be actively humorous I find mostly grating. So no interest in Charles Dickens ever ever again. Question number three is an author whose books you have no interest in reading and for me that is Frederick Bachman. Logically I know that there is a coziness to them but to me it just seems like every description of all his, of his books seems nothing but twee um, and and like overly sentimental and I, I don't get that either. It just doesn't strike me as genuine. It doesn't elicit genuine feelings in me and I did try to read Oh my gosh, the one that's about the old guy, I can't remember. A Man Called Uva? Is that what it's called? I tried to read that book. I maybe only got through the first chapter of the audiobook, maybe the second, because it was just about this like crotchety old guy shitting on technology and like his neighbors, who I believe were people of color, so it's like cool, a racist, judgmental old guy. Um, like, you know, complaining about millennials. Like, I don't need that in my life. I already know that us millennials are the root cause of all of the world's problems, or at least that's what the internet likes to tell us. Um, so I don't need another book that kind of is like coming at it from that perspective. And I get that maybe he grows and changes over time, but I don't really need to read a redemption arc for like some crabby old guy. That does not sound interesting to me at all. And again, if it's about his redemption and him like learning and growing or whatever, that just sounds like absurdly twee and overly sentimental. And it just sounds awful. I, I, I have zero interest in going down that path, so no thank you. I guess this was like a bonus question, like question 3.5 or whatever, but a problematic author that you have no interest in reading, and again this is an author that I have tried, and that is Brandon Sanderson. I did read Steelheart, which was the first of like his superhero YA series. It was terrible. Like le legitimately the only thing I remember about it is that there was a female character whose main personality characteristic was that she liked diet soda. That was her whole personality. Um, and then I also tried to read Miss Porn and I couldn't get past the first hundred pages because I thought it was so terrible. But not only are his books bad, but also he is not a great person. He is known to have made homophobic remarks before. He, I believe, is a part of a homophobic church. And even if he has apologized and kind of grown and changed after that in 
I've heard that maybe he has like a non-binary character in one of his new novels. You don't get a cookie for that. And I don't know if it was well executed, but on top of that, my issue is that he does not write women well. Again, Steelheart. There was a woman whose entire personality was liking Diet Soda. That's like not good writing. I don't know if I need to tell you that, but also Miss Bourne, the female protagonist in Miss Bourne, was terrible. She was just like so flat, so boring. I just, I don't think that your female characters should suck. And if they do, I think that makes you a problematic author. I don't want to support that. I don't think that he deserves my money. He's getting plenty of money from everyone else because everyone else seems to love him and forgive him, like desperately want to forgive him for his homophobia. Like all I ever see online about him is someone accusing him of homophobia and then people saying, oh, he's better now. Like they desperately need to justify that perhaps he is a bigot, but we don't want to think of him as a bigot because we want to keep enjoying his books. I don't want to support that kind of person. And he doesn't need my money anyway, so. No thank you, Brandon Sanderson. The next question is, an author you've read a couple books from and have decided their books are not for you. So that applies to a bunch of people that I already mentioned, but I have a couple more answers for this question anyway. The first being Ruth Ware. So I listened to In a Dark Dark Wood over the summer. It was fine. You know, didn't knock my socks off, but it was mildly entertaining for a road trip. And then we decided to try and read The Woman in Cabin 10 and it was terrible. Like it was so boring. I actually fell asleep. Luckily I wasn't driving. I just don't think that she's that good. You know, she might be very commercially appealing, um, but I want my books to be a little bit more innovative or interesting. And and I totally called what happened in Dark Dark Wood. It was not a surprising thing. It felt kind of generic. If I want to read a mystery or thriller, it doesn't necessarily bother me if I'm able to deduce who did it or what happened, but I wanted to feel a little bit more creative than in a Dark Dark Wood, which was very predictable. The other one I have to say is Martha Wells. Perhaps if she writes a different series I might consider it, but I, ha I did read the first book in the Murderbot Diaries and I thought it was so average. I know people rave about the Murderbot Diaries books and how funny they are and how clever they are and how great of a character Murderbot is. I got none of that <laughs> for my reading experience. I thought it was just like totally fine and forgettable. I don't really like humor. Maybe it's because I'm a joyless person. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that, like I'm just a super curmudgeonly old person dropped in this young person's body. But I don't tend to like humor and if it was going for funny, I either just like completely missed it or it didn't gel with me or something because, I don't know, I'm a curmudgeon. The next question is a genre that you have no interest in or a genre that you've tried to get into and couldn't. Um, I have a couple for this one. The first I think is obvious, it's satire. I. You know, it's not always going for humor necessarily, but it is trying to be really clever to like make some kind of point um, through like playing with social norms or constructions or, you know, you know what satire is. I don't need to define it for you poorly, um, but it, I usually like get it, but I don't really enjoy the process of reading satire all that much. Like there are a couple of instances where it has really impressed me or maybe look at things in a different way, which I think are, you know, some of the, the points of satires to give you a different perspective on something, but often it feels overwrought, super forced, trying to be funny, trying to be clever, and I just, I don't know. When I, when I see the author working too hard to make the structure, it kind of distracts from my enjoyment of the text. I don't always need to completely sink into a narrative and forget that like I exist outside of the story and, and the whole world doesn't need to fall away, but when I'm drawn out of the story enough that I'm consistently like distracted by writing or distracted by technique and not like an impressed way in a I, I don't tend to enjoy that as much. It's kind of why I like certain texts I think would be really fun to study in a classroom but I have no interest in reading for fun because I don't necessarily always want to work that hard and maybe it'd be great or for dialogue but if I have no one to talk to then that dialogue isn't going to happen and I'm doing all this work for nothing, if that makes sense. I don't know. Anyway, satire. Not for me. I also have really struggled with manga. I know manga isn't a genre, it's a format, and there are a lot of different genres within manga. And you know, I've just never really successfully fallen into a series that I've absolutely loved. I really liked Orange. Orange is the only manga I can think of where I like, I really was delighted from start to finish and couldn't wait to pick up the next volume, but there were only two volumes, so it was relatively easy to get into. One of, one of my barriers for manga, I think, is the fact that there are a lot of really big series that have dozens of volumes, and the volumes are all like $10 each. I'm probably not going to spend that money. My library might not have all the volumes. It just, there's a big commitment to acquiring the text because there are, there are often, you know, so many volumes and they go down so quickly that 
it seems like a good thing for a binge, but then I don't really know if it's gonna stay with me. I don't know. I've also just noticed that some of the manga that I've read that was also turned into an anime, I tend to just enjoy the anime experience better because it's so dynamic and, and the visuals connect with me. Um, the animation connects with me in a better way than the stills on the page, if that makes sense. So I don't know. I would love to try and give more manga a try, but it's not a genre that I feel super pulled toward because I often feel like it just goes off the rails really fast. It's another thing that I struggle with with anime is that I like the concept but so quickly go off the rails into like something super wonky that isn't what I wanted or had been told that I was gonna get. So I don't know. I struggle with both manga and anime, but I'm always open to trying more things because I think that as mediums they're super cool and like I, I studied, if you don't know, I was a Japanese major in college so I really love Japanese culture and history and the language um, and I would love to get back into studying those things and engaging with them more but I do struggle with those pieces of media sometimes. The next question is a book that you've bought that you have no intention of reading. I do this all the time um, and like I always buy books with the intention of reading them ultimately but you know things sit on my shelf for years and years and I'm not interested in them anymore. And I got into the habit of buying books more quickly than I could read them. So I would buy 10 books, I would read three of them, and then I would buy 10 more, and then I'd read three more of those. But the seven that I hadn't gotten to before end up sitting on my shelf for a long time. And the further I get from that experience of buying the book, the less interested I am in it sometimes. Sometimes, you know, my, my tastes have changed quite a bit, particularly in the past year, in terms of what I'm interested in. But I have no personal guilt or, or shame associated with having a lot of books on my TBR unread and getting rid of things that I'm not interested in anymore. That money has already been spent, it's already gone, um, and now it's like mine to do with what I wish. And if that wish is for me to get it out of my house, that is totally justified and I feel no guilt about it because that money was spent probably years ago. So this is all to say right now I don't have any books that I have no intention of reading because I have a very limited collection. It's right behind me, you can't see it, but I have maybe 30 books or less on my, my current shelf because most of my books are still in storage from when I moved um, and who knows when I'll see those books again so those I'm not even counting but with these I have such a small collection that I'm able to kind of keep it manageable and keep it to all the things that I'm, I'm currently interested in for the most part but in the past I've done a bunch of unhaul videos you can find them on my channel in the past I've gotten rid of a bunch of books that I did not read I bought with the intention of reading and then never did, and then got rid of. So I've done that with hundreds of books over the duration of my channel, and I have made multiple videos about that if you're interested. The next question is a series that you have no interest in reading. This is perhaps my spiciest opinion, I don't know. Uh, it's the one that I'm the most scared to share, I think, and that's that I have really very little interest in reading Hilary Mantel's Thomas Cromwell series. I think my issue is I don't like historical fiction that deals with people who were real. That feels different to me for some reason. Um, like I read a novel a year or two ago where it's like William Shakespeare ended up being one of the characters and you didn't kind of know that right away and then you figure out that it's Shakespeare and I was just so annoyed by his presence in the novel that I just like kind of lost interest. I've noticed this with several books that I've read. I just really struggle when it's trying to be historical and dealing with people who are real because I feel like that's what I want to go to nonfiction for. I want to I want to read things that are factual. I want to read things that happened as to the best of our knowledge. And it's great that Hilary Mantel is able to re recreate this person's life really vividly and um, you know imagine what he was thinking and feeling and stuff and what these people were all doing. It might be based in archival research, but it's ultimately fiction, and that's where I think I don't know. My brain just doesn't like that. I just don't really want to read fan fiction about Thomas Cromwell. Uh, I'm sure they're fantastic, and maybe I'll change my mind one day, but. I have absolutely no interest in reading Wolf Hall. It's long and yeah, it's it's about historical figures that actually existed. I would much rather read historical fiction about made up people. The last question is a new release that you have no interest in. And this again is, I just want you to bear with me, but it's The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is actually a book that to me sounds quite interesting. I really like the premise. I want to read more books by indigenous authors. Um, I have wanted to dabble more in horror, so you'd think this would be my jam. 
but my issue is Stephen Graham Jones was a professor of mine in college and he didn't do anything egregious. He, you know, he didn't do anything that like super offended me, but as a professor, he was not my favorite. And he did things that I did find to be kind of res disrespectful of my time as a student. I just had this negative association with him in my head. So for instance, I don't want to like get too far into it because I, I feel, if I haven't mentioned this before on my channel because I it feels uncomfortable so I don't want to get too into it or like feel like I'm bashing this person or anything but there was a time where I mean, he spent class time promoting his work promoting himself as an author which was not the intention of the class it was a graphic novels class he showed us like a photo shoot that this like local culture magazine had done with him um because he was going to be on the cover of it so he just did things like that but just like left a bad taste in my mouth with my experience of him as a person. I'm sure he's like plenty nice and stuff, but as a professor, I just didn't have the best experience walking away from that class. Again, he didn't do anything like offensive, but I did feel like my time was sort of disrespected and wasted at points during the class over the course of the semester. And the thing is, is my experience with him as a professor, my memory of that class would probably have faded in my memory. Were he not brought up so often on booktube? I hear about the only good Indians like almost every day. Um, so it just is weird. Uh, like I really want to want to read a book of his, um, but I'm not sure if I would be able to divorce my experience with him as a person and my experience with the text. It, it's such a, just such an odd situation, but I hope you understand. <laughs> yeah, certainly not trying to bash anyone. I'm really glad that uh, he is experiencing a lot of success and people are really liking his stuff and it makes me really want to read it, but yeah, it just... A weird class experience. And now is the point where I get to tag people and normally I'm like oh do it if you want to I don't know who's done it but I actually decided I wanted to tag people because I wanted to promote three channels of people that I really like who have under a thousand subscribers um, and I think that they should do this video and that you should check them out. The first is Stephanie Bookish, second is Kate Hickey, and third is Laurel Land from Insert Book Pun Here. You've all been tagged. I'd love to hear your salty opinions about books that you don't want to read. And that is the end of the tags. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I shared in this video, but if you don't have any thoughts to share, I would love it if you just left an emoji down in the comments, perhaps one that you never use uh, to kind of be thematic with this video, books I never want to read, emojis you never think of using, just to see if you made it to the end. I think that'd be fun. If you did make it to the end, super grateful. Love to hear from you in the comments. Love to see the videos from the people I tagged. And um, yeah, I appreciate you so much. I hope you're doing well. I hope this video was mildly amusing and I will see you hopefully soon with another one.